welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the auto attraction entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we come to you this week preaching to the choirs, we'll get into it in a minute, <laughs> talking about the importance of home haunting and home haunters to that aforementioned haunted attraction industry. Mm-hmm. Got a lot to go over this week, but hey, if you really don't care about home haunters, What the hell's wrong with you? Actually, you really should be listening to this episode. If you already know this, is the better reason to move on to another episode. Yeah. Um, Check us out at hauntweekly.com or hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, youtube.com slash hauntweekly. And we're also wherever you get your podcast from. All the places. It's out there. It's free to the public. No gates or anything. Because we we can't be arsed to put up any barriers. Pretty much. Yeah. So, it has been a super lazy weekend for us, to be honest with you. We had some things we had to take care of. Uh, You had a 3D printing mishap. Yeah, that was fun. Uh. So, we didn't do any direct work for the haunt, but we did mess around to get the 3D printer working again, Mm -hmm. which I think may be useful for the haunt. Yes, I am planning on... Printing lots of gears. And, yeah, and that getting the 3D printer working ended up being a way bigger task with a way dumber solution than I ever thought. Oh, Because yes. this to ate up all of our Friday and not an insignificant chunk of our Saturday. We? Who's we? Yeah, well, technically <laughs> you. Hey, I was there on a... No, it was Wednesday. Wednesday. I was there yeah, Wednesday. I know. When uh, the worst of it was going down. I was there trying to help, but... One of the problems is the room that we have the 3D printer in is about the size of, well, a coffin. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So it, getting two people in there is a contortion act, and then trying to get two people to work on a 3D printer. Double so, but yeah, basically we realized the problem we had with the 3D printer was our filament had gone bad. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, that's the uh, long story short that's version. The, that's, that's it. That's the whole thing. And yeah. that was after so much trial and error, trying to get, fix other things, clean it out, do all these tricks we looked up online. Yeah. and do I'm all- just glad I didn't have to actually take it completely apart to clean it. Yeah, I mean, we got the, we have the Anchor Mate, which is yeah. supposed to be the 3D printer for people who don't want to fuck around with 3D printers. <laughs> Basically. Know, it's supposed to be the a good quality 3D printer, but meant for people who are new at 3D printing. Mm-hmm. So, kind of us, you know, basically. I've done a little 3D printing before, but I, I have not done much, like, the whole process up until now. And so, basically, it's been an, an experience, but we're looking forward to getting some gears and other things made and really use it. But it's too bad that a uh, yarn bowl. <laughs> yeah, I was printing a Death Star yarn bowl it to sell cool. at the store. And the it bottom did. half of it looks great. Yeah, it does. That, and, you know, honestly, you probably could, if you sanded it down, the bottom half could still function as a yarn bowl. Because it's it, almost a yarn bowl. It could be a bowl. Yeah, it could uh, be, it's definitely a bowl. I don't yeah. think I would put, like, food in it, because I don't know about... Uh, food qualities um, of it. 3D yeah. printing, I don't think we have any. I wouldn't trust that. No. But, regardless... Um, it like, wrap candies and yeah, stuff. exactly. Put something like that in there, it'd be fine. But, yeah, the, basically, it didn't. About two-thirds the way through, moved, got bumped, and disaster happened it was ugly yeah it was a big fucking mess it was not good lessons were learned lessons were learned and um what was really fun was you discovered you can watch it remotely yes because the anger mate has the app which lets you look at the 3d printing as it's going on no matter where you are yeah and it can also record it for you so that you can do a time lapse video later yeah yeah so that was pretty cool um I forgot about got <laughs> Yeah, so I I checked it for the first hour, and then the second hour, because it was an eight-hour print. (laughs) And then on, like, five hours in, I check it, and it's all fucked up. Yeah. And it was still just going, like a little... Oh, yeah. It was. It was trying. It was doing its best. It's like, I'm going to get this back together. Uh, No, you're not. No. (laughs) No, no, you're not. Little 3D printer dude. No, you will not. All right. Moving on, um, every week we ask a question. A week last week we were talking about Shadowcast. Yes. 
And we asked the question, other than Rocky Horror, what movie do you love with a shadow caster would want to see if you don't have the option? Uh, Chris Gay, Repo, which is one of the reasons we love Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Repo is, without a doubt, my favorite movie. Like I said, two of the posters from the film are hanging above us as we record this. Yes, and at least three Darren Bousman Things. autographs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's right. I do have three, don't I? I've yeah. got one on the poster. One on, oh, yeah. No, wait, I have four. Because um, I also have the uh, signed poster over there. It's not on the back. Poster, the, poster, no, the, small letter. And the big one over there, the one in the frame. And it's oh. a signature on the back, too. Well, I can't see that. It's I know, behind I know. That's post. why I was saying there's four. Yeah, it's behind a light And post. I also have clippings from the f film version of it, the, the film <laughs> clippings from it, too. Yeah, yep. I might be a repo mark, so... <laughs> Maybe. Just a weed a bit of I, I think they know that, though, about you. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Okay, let's anyway. move on. There are people that said things that maybe aren't, like, totally, uh, like, making me geek out. Uh, yeah. Anthony Ariel Gamondo said, Twilight would be hilarious. I don't know enough about Twilight to judge that. No, neither do I. Um... And I think we'll just leave it at that. No. All, I, all I know is sparkly vampires uh, I, and that horrible story that you looked up um, uh, yeah. about some kid being imprinted or something. Oh, yeah, it yeah. Was, it the was the baby horrible. The baby. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Like, yeah. why do people like that? I don't understand. Yeah, um, they, they, maybe I'm just not the right age. Maybe. Um, Daniel Barnett said, Dr. Horrible or Little Shop of Horrors. We have seen uh, Dr. Horrible or Shadowcast. It's great. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely hilarious. It was actually paired with Once More with Feeling uh, when we saw it, because they're both about uh, 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, and Little Shop of Horrors, we've seen a stage production, but not a shadow cast. Right, but that would be a fun one, and it yeah. would be fairly simple. Uh, Pete Blocky said, Blackwell said, Phantom of the Opera. Which, yeah, I, 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 I once again, I don't know that much about Phantom of the Opera. I've, I've seen it, but it's been a, a long time. <laughs> Yeah, and again, which uh, the other question that immediately comes up is which version? Because there are like six different versions since the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Which one? I, I, I think the uh, Andrew Lee Weber movie one is the obvious choice, but whatever, <laughs> you know. And finally... Ellie Ferguson. Ellie, you know, our Ellie. Our said Clue. And, okay, and, and she's obviously pandering because well, yeah. between Repo, Rocky Horror, and Clue, you've got probably my three favorite movies of all time. And the ones that get watched most often well, We the rewatch them constantly around this house. Uh, and Clue, I was thinking about it after she proposed it. First, I looked it up. There are Clue Shadowcast, but none here. So yeah. we've never seen it with Shadowcast. Um, if we're ever in Chicago, apparently we have to watch out. Yeah. Um, so there's like some elsewhere in the country, but not here. But I was thinking about it, and I have a proposal. If anyone wants to do Clue with Shadowcast, here's my rule. You do it with only eight people. And then I can hear you saying, wait, I've seen Clue. There's a lot more people than eight. Shut up and listen. I've got this covered. I figured this out. Thought about this way harder than I should have. First, you need the six name characters from the game itself, correct? So Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, all them, right? Miss Peacock, mm -hmm. so forth. You need those six. You need Wadsworth as your seventh. And eighth is victim. <laughs> because one thing I realized, other than Yvette and Mr. Body briefly interacting, um, there are no scenes where the victims interact with uh, other victims, basically. They only interact with the other people. Most of the film is person shows up, gets locked in the room, <laughs> gets killed later. Yeah. It's like the whole film is that. And so, yeah, it might be a little difficult because you'd have to, like, throw on, like, a poodle, like, the French maid skirt and then a, a, a suit jacket to pretend Mr. Body and switch back and forth. But that's the hilarious stuff. And then when they're dead, replace them with stuffed animals. Yes. <laughs> stuffed animals or just cheap dummies if you really like to go that route. But basically, yeah, just replace them with inanimate objects and that way they can do all the posing and stuff for it and not have to worry about, you know, anyone's discomfort at being manhandled while pretending to be dead. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I think that would be a lot of fun. I would laugh my ass off of that. And I, the inspiration for that was the repo shadow cast we saw where they just used the same victim over and over and over again. He got killed like five times in that movie. It was great. Yeah, it was. Oh. And we're also seeing um, a production of Clue. Oh, yeah, the a, musical. Yeah, in a couple of months. So that'll yeah. be fun. Like November, isn't it? No, it's June. June, okay. Yeah, no, it's coming up sooner than November. Okay, I, I, I couldn't remember when we yeah. bought the tickets. I knew we bought the tickets because we're mad lads. Yeah. But, but anyways, yeah, we're excited about that. Okay, so this week's question of the week 
is what is your favorite experience at a home haunt other than obviously your own home haunt? <laughs> so like going to someone else's home haunt. And honestly, you know, I think all my best experiences were when I was a kid. Um, it was so cool to see the houses that decorated up and did things right. Like I, I hated the one house that had the strobe on the steps leading up and I, I was going to bust my ass so bad on that. But, you know, I really did love how in the neighborhood I grew up in, these little mini home haunts were just everywhere. Yeah. You could go on a regular trick or treat run for like a kid and easily hit three or four of these. And I remember thinking, I want to go to the scary house. And then I got to be an adult. It's like, I want to be the scary house. Yeah, I, um, I've um, i talked about it before. I didn't get to go to haunted houses as a kid, not even home haunts. There was one that I came across once, but I wasn't allowed to go in, um, even though I really wanted to. So that actually stoked it more for yeah. me because yeah. I didn't know what was in there and I wanted to know. So I just built it. Yeah, but, and that's the thing. Your mom never understood the very principle that I learned, like, week <laughs> one knowing you. Yeah. So this going back, like, 25 years ago now. Like, week one, I learned, if you tell Crystal no, <laughs> she's going to do it harder. <laughs> yeah. Because she does not know the meaning of the word no. Mm, yeah. Really, no. I mean, <laughs> you tell her no, don't you, we're not going to do that. Exactly what we just described is going to happen. She's just going to get in her head. going to go on a loop. Ba -ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba -da, play in her head all through childhood into adulthood. And then she's going to have a garage filled with a haunted house. Yes. And inviting kids I don't know into it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't understand why your mom was so unclear on that very, very predictable outcome. Well, yeah. Because you used to, <laughs> when I was tiny and I was sad... My dad would always tell me, don't smile, and it it still makes me smile. I know. Like, I can't help it. <clears throat> I've had to force myself to stop using it, because it's too easy. <laughs> it really is. It's I, I, I have hit a point where I need a challenge in my life, <laughs> and that is not a challenge to me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it is funny, especially when you're trying to pretend to be upset. Well, it's it's reflexive. Like I, I literally cannot control like it, my response. And like I know we're not on a video right now, but literally she said the words "don't smile" to herself uh -huh. and immediately smiled. Yes, <laughs> even though she was the one saying the words <laughs> to you, dear listener. Well, so, it's because of those memories. Yeah, but no, I I had to tell myself to stop doing it because it's just too easy. And besides, there's much more fun ways to make her smile, like tell a bad pun. And then watch her go, and then secretly smile and look away. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, everyone, we're going to get to this week's topic, which is why home haunting is important, specifically to the haunted attraction industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we kind of hit around a lot, but never really talked about directly. Yeah. Um, now, I want to be clear before we jump in. We are hardcore, super-duper preaching to the choir. We know this. We know this. Look, I mean, A, from meeting you and hanging out with you and, and, and writing you and all that, we know that a lot of you, if not a majority, are home haunters yourselves. Mm -hmm. And the pro haunters that seem to listen regularly really do love home haunters, too. I don't think there's a listener out to this podcast who really is, like, the target for this. Yeah. Which makes it kind of stupid to do an episode about it. But I guess my hope is that you, dear listener, will have this in your back pocket if someone does the thing. Because every once in a while, and not often, like, the vast majority of pro haunters really do seem to appreciate home haunting and respect it and, and have at least some reverence for it, some love for it. But every once in a while, someone gets a bug up their ass about how home haunting ain't real haunting. You ain't a real haunter if you're just doing it at your house. Diddly, diddly, dee. And that's the attitude we're trying to target today. So if you encounter those people, this is the episode to play them. Yes. Not that they're going to listen to us. The whole thing is really just an exercise in futility. But hey, you're here for 50 minutes. So, um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, but it's like I said, it's such a rare thing. And and the thing about it I've noticed is like the people that get that way about it are not the owners of haunts. Not usually. No. 
Not usually. I think the, oh, because we'll get to it in a minute, but a lot of owners started home haunting. So, of course, they have respect for it and they have love for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it's just, I, I think the owners typically kind of understand it better than a lot of, let's say, usually like the lieutenant types, the middle management type at Hollands, the zone managers and so forth. They get that kind of bug up their butt about it. So, for those very, very few people who do look down on home haunters, here are seven reasons why home haunting is important to the industry. And at the end, we're going to discuss some ideas of how pro haunters can actually help home haunters directly. So, mm-hmm. if we've convinced you of this, some ideas of things you can do to help stoke home haunting a little bit and make the scene a little more vibrant. Yeah. Make sense? All right. Item one. Item one. Uh, many pro haunts actually started as home haunts or charity haunts. What? That's just what Jonathan was saying. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know either. Uh, locally, the House of Shock, 13th Gate, um, both were amateur haunts. Yeah, 13th started. Gate was technically in a school gym doing some kind of charity stuff. But yeah, they, but they and House of Shock well, I was I think they were just building up. Yeah, but House of Shock is definitely was definitely a home haunt when it started. And then, of course, that moved on to Snow New Orleans Nightmare. Yeah, and also the recently opened Pro Haunt Decomposed, uh, run by our friends. Yeah. Um, they they started as a home haunt or a home haunt party. Yeah, kind of thing. It definitely that was, counts as a home haunt, but it was not a not the home haunt the way we think about it. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> and we didn't start out with like a definition of a home haunt because we assume everybody kind of knows, but it's. Any spooky builds of sets in your yard for use at Halloween. Yeah, basically, yard or house. any attempt to provide a haunted attraction-like experience at your house. Yeah, yeah. but I think that's the way to say it. Yeah, they did it for over a decade and yeah, I, stored all of the panels each year yeah, cause what after his, testing them. What his thing was, was he would do a different room yeah. each year, build the panels, decorate, and then host the event. Yeah. And then those panels that go and start working on the next room. Yeah. And eventually he built up enough to open up a a decent sized haunted attraction. It's very sizable now. It's very sizable. Yeah. And then he fucking doubled it last year because he's just a mad bastard like that. Yeah. And frankly, I think he needs help. Um, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're worried <laughs> like, about you, dude. Like literally with physical labor and I, like and a cycle, bit. both types of help. He needs all the help. Psychological yeah. and physical. Yeah, and back when it was around, Chamber of Horrors also did that, and actually are back to home haunting now mm-hmm. after the pro haunt closed. Yeah, after the lease bullshit. And, yeah, and we, that was a that was a heartbreaking story. That was, and it was totally unfair. And yeah, honestly, that haunt could have gone on a long fucking time, probably. Because no. I mean, Eddie has such great passion for this. It's such a piss off to even think about it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but basically, if you're going to get into haunted attraction business, there are two paths. You can either be a home haunter that makes the decision to add the expense, add the headache, add the overhead of going home, of going pro, rather. Um, Or you can be a business person who sees an opportunity and takes it. And frankly, I don't think a lot of business people are looking at the haunted attraction industry right now and thinking, that's easy money. (laughs) Well, so I've seen... I've been to some haunts, and so have you, Mm -hmm. that were started that way by business people saying, hey, that haunted house has a line. I want to put my money there. And then they meet up with a local creative, usually a home haunter, to fund the the pro haunt. And it doesn't work as well. The problem is the haunted attraction industry, while you can definitely make money at it, definitely can be a full-time job, and so on and so forth. It's difficult. There's a lot working against it. You're paying year-round bills when you're only open six weeks is one. Um, Obviously, all the issues with permitting, fire marshal, all that raises it. It's expensive to get into. It requires a lot of employees during season if you're going to run it properly. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reasons. But, I mean, some people, I swear to God, um, will sit outside like the 13th gate and just count the heads in line and go, that's 25 bucks a ticket. That's blah, 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 thousands of dollars. Yeah. I could do this. And then uh, the fuck you can. <laughs> yeah. The fuck you can. But but there are people who get into it for that reason. And I think they're often 
not wise to the realities of the haunted attraction. If you think yeah. this is easy money, you're an idiot. Well, and I've also met people, you know, at conventions that are thinking of starting their first haunt because they have another type of small business on the property that is also seasonal. Yeah. And that does make some degree of sense. Yeah. If you already have the property, that eliminates a lot of it, the challenges, and you're looking for something to do in the autumn season. Like, honestly, if I had one of those winter wonderland type attractions, like, that's what we're seeing a lot of haunts do, is having right. Christmas shows. I could see it working the other way, too. Yeah, I mean, it, that does seem like a natural progression for, like, the two to kind of merge and come together um, and work yeah. together. Yeah, as anti-Christmas as we are around here, I will acknowledge that Christmas is good business. Yeah. <laughs> I will admit that openly and without any hesitation. But yeah, but basically, uh, the, getting back to the topic here, home haunters <laughs> often grow into pro haunters. And so when you're looking at and dealing with home haunters, you could be dealing with the next generation of pro haunters. Now, we made a firm decision to not go pro. And we actually did a whole episode about our reasons. So I won't regurgitate that. But mm -hmm. basically, we made the decision not to go pro because it wasn't right for us. Um, but a lot of people decided it is right for them, and that is a very common way to become a pro haunter. So home haunters are where the next generation of pro haunters often come from. Mm -hmm. That's reason one that I think home haunting is very, very important. I'd be interested to do a survey of haunt owners and see how many are type one versus type two and how they got into it. Yeah. And there's probably other types, too, that aren't listed. Yeah. But Those are the most common. Oh, by far the most common. I I mean, I guess you could, like, inherit it. Hmm. Well, you could also just be a haunted enthusiast and go to haunted houses all the time and just decide. Just immediately just jump to building a pro haunt and skip yeah. the home haunt stage entirely. Yeah, or, you know, work at haunted That's houses. That's like the Smothers Brothers joke about getting so many <laughs> airline points that you go from coach to pilot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that Smothers Brothers joke in real life there. It is. But but I've also heard of people starting out working at pro haunts yeah, and, and learning the, what they can. And that's what I think would be more common, actually, for the third category, yeah. are people who work as actors or zone zone leaders or, or whatever. Or even in the business side of yeah, it. Yeah, and decide that they want to do their own thing, and so they do it. So, yeah, that might be, that's, I think, your actual true third path. I can, I can definitely mm. see that. All right. So reason number two home haunts matter. For many customers, especially those that are really passionate about haunted attractions, home haunts were their first experience. It was my first experience with anything haunted attraction-like. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was true for you because we already had the conversation about how your mom was an idiot and didn't understand that you were going to totally <laughs> rebel against her trying to tell you not. I, I don't understand. She lived with you... Up until when you were 18, how did she not realize this about you? This is a yeah, fundamental thing of the Crystal experience. <laughs> if you want to see Crystal unicycle on a tightrope over a pit of alligators, tell her, no, you can't do it. There's no way. Yeah, and that one's extra tricky because I, I do have that fear of heights. So. Well, it could be a low one. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a low yeah. tightrope. I'm not afraid of alligators, though. So, you know, that <laughs> one's not the problem. the alligators. Yeah, that's not the problem here. No, no, not a reasonable fear of the alligator. <laughs> no. A bigger feel of fear of falling into the pool of water. <laughs> no, just off of the rope. <laughs> anyway. But yes, uh, many people discover their love for haunted attractions, their love for fear-based stuff, um, including horror movies and so mm -hmm. forth, through home haunts. And, and there's a simple reason for that. Going to a pro haunt is fucking expensive, and there's no way to cur no way to couch that. Very few haunted attractions are what I would consider to be very easily affordable for a family of four. Yeah, and I mean, the reason we started ours is because it was after Katrina. There was nothing for the kids to do in the city, and we're like, we're going to do this this year because we have a little bit of... We thought we had a little bit of time. <laughs> we did have a tiny bit of extra money that year. Yes. Um, enough to buy, you know, some scrap wood, basically. Buy, buy two by twos. Buy what? Because there wasn't a two by four or a sheet of plywood to be found anywhere in the city of New Orleans in August no. 20, 2005. Not August, September 2005. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, we, we did it specifically... Just to do something for the community during a hard time. Yeah, and admittedly, we weren't sure we were going to ever do it the next year. No. 
Um, but we did. And then we did, 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 and then we did. Yes. And then the fucking road construction somewhere. Yeah, I know. But anyways, um, so yeah, going to a haunt is expensive. And if you're not sure you're going to enjoy, or at least confident that you're likely going to enjoy it, it's a big ask Mm -hmm. for people to do it. So home haunts give people a safe, easy low barrier to entry way to have that haunted attraction experience and sort of test it out. And we've actually heard from people who've come to our haunt that we come to you every year. And because of you, we also go to all the other haunts now too. Yeah. Heard that multiple times. Yeah. We didn't think our kids were going to like haunted houses, but we brought them to yours and now we can't get them, you know, to not go to the other ones. Like they want to go to all of the ones. Yeah, and it's always amazing because it's always the parents who think their kids are not going to like it. The kids yeah. love it. And all the parents are like, oh, yeah, she's going to love it. It's going to be great. That kid is crying every second. Yeah. Pa- Maybe that's the problem. Parents don't know their kids. <laughs> Maybe we've just cracked the code. Maybe parents just really don't understand their own kids. Maybe. Have we consider this possibility because it's starting to feel like the answer to like everything going on here. But yeah, um, because basically, when you think about the haunted attraction industry, home haunt is the entry level. It's Mm -hmm. the entry level for both haunt owners and the entry level for haunt uh, haunt goers, haunt customers. And without that entry level, it's going to be very difficult for the industry to build up that next generation of both haunters and haunt customers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's basically that one. All right, next up is... It's where a lot of actors start out. Yeah. Many of our actors have gone on to paid gigs at local area haunts. Um, we've also taken in some actors from haunts for other reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it provides a low commitment. You can get your foot in at ground level. You can learn. Like if you have the time and you want to show up, to, to learn how to build and yeah. lay out and, and all of that, we will walk you through it. We yeah. will accept the help. Um, there is a point that we have to get to in our own build yeah. before we can really utilize help. And yeah. I think that's true for everybody. Yeah, outside help especially. But if you want to learn everything from the basics of how to build a haunted house to how to paint, decorate, light, do sound design, all that stuff, yeah. we can walk you through 99% of that yeah. easily. And, of course, act in it. And one of the great things about a home haunt is since they're only open usually only a few nights a year, mm-hmm. it's not a huge commitment. Yeah. The person isn't setting themselves up for, like, you know, six weeks of having to work, you know, their off days at a haunted house. Right. And a lot of the, at least in, in my experience, a lot of the the kids are, or not necessarily kids, because we have had a couple of kids that have worked with us. Yeah. But we have a lot of adults, too, and they, they don't feel like they fit in society well, you know? Mm-hmm. Is that... Yeah. Um, or... You know, especially with the the kids that it, that we've worked with, they've been you know kind of in their own cocoon. Yeah. And their parents are like, "Look, can they can they do something in the haunt and and try to get them out of their shell a little bit? Try to give them a little bit of confidence." And I I think we do that very well um, by supporting people. Yeah. And and that's what I found at haunts that we've worked at and haunts that we've been to. And the feeling I get from other home haunts is that it's a very community-based environment where you help build yeah. up your skills. And it's, once again, it's the entry level. Yes. It's where you start out. It, it and, and one of the things I noticed, like we had a couple actors, like you said, came to us, worked with us for a few years, because since we're only three nights, but they got more availability on time. Um, one of them I know was in school and then graduated and then got more time. And she took a gig at the mortuary working there you know, the full season and very happy for her. She did a great job with us and she's a good ad for the more good addition to the mortuary. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very happy that it worked out. But yeah, basically it's that low commitment thing where if this doesn't work out, eh, you know, it's only three nights. It's not a huge deal, right? It's only three nights. 
And so, yeah, it basically uh, both allows people to sort of get their feet wet with it. Mm -hmm. But also, it's a great way for people who maybe normally would take a full season gig to sort of keep the fire going when maybe something else is going on. We had one guy once who had a new baby or the baby or the kid was in a new place, decided he couldn't do the full stint at another area haunt, worked with us. Right. And And we actually did one or two nights. He didn't even do the full season with us. Yeah, and we've also had people who, you know, thought they would love haunting, came, helped with the build, um, got into their actor role, and then didn't like it and mm-hmm. didn't come back after one night. But that's an easy way for a testing ground. Yeah, and and honestly, you know, that's something that's important because it's very difficult. One of the reasons I think haunts have a tough time motivating people is because the same people who I think would really love being a haunt worker don't realize they would love being a haunt worker. <laughs> yeah. They don't know. And like, and that can be very difficult to convince them, especially to make a big commitment to it the first time in. Yeah. And a lot of the time, even people. So whenever you say people who don't realize they would like it, I think of the many people that we've had that say, Oh, I don't like haunted houses. Not I get all. scared too easily. And I'm like, Okay, but here you're in control and you're not being scared. You are doing the scary. We're flipping the script, baby. <laughs> and and they love that. And they come in and they're some of the hardest working actors I've seen. I, I tell you what, you know, the scaredy cat, the ones that are too scared to ever set foot in a haunted house when it's open, um, they're, they're great actors. Good energy. Good. Because they know what they fear and they can bring that to the role. Yeah. All right. Number four is haunted attractions, home haunts are the beds of innovation in the haunted attraction industry in a lot of ways. Basically, home haunts have an easier time making big changes, taking big swings, trying these crazy new ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we're not worried about making money. So if this idea causes us to not have as many visitors one year or whatever, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like we not like we lost more money. It's not, you know what I mean? We're not we're not going to go in the hole on it, and base and since there's it's an easier slash no approval process. You're not having to run everything by permitting. You're not having to do all this stuff. It's easy to make big changes and take those big crazy swings. Yeah, um, rules and regulations may apply in your area. Yeah, I feel like I gotta say that. <laughs> yeah, obviously, but yeah, but basically, home haunts are a great place to experiment. And I love experimenting. In fact, we've referred to our haunt as a laboratory before. Yeah. Because that's one thing we try to do is every year we're trying to experiment and see what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And we're trying to push ourselves and push the boundaries of what is a a haunted house within the confines of what people think of. And we're also trying to experiment with ways to like do more with fewer people. Yeah. We're trying, but without leaning on animatronics. How do we have more points of contact? You know what I mean? Well, and, and that's one of the weird things about ours over the years is that we started out having like actors do three and four scares, mm-hmm. and then we got a big enough crew that we broke it out. But now our screw our crew is starting to dwindle a little bit. Yeah, we got to do some recruiting this year. I yeah, think. people have moved on with their lives. They've grown out. Well, of and we it lost and, a lot yeah. between 2019 and 2022. We we did. Um, but anyway, life happened. Uh, so now we're looking at multiple scares per actor again. But trying to find ways that it actually works, because the way we were doing it previously didn't work. No, it didn't. Especially when customers were going through fast, which a lot of scare customers do. So what we've been doing, focusing on a lot of, is cross-haunt scares, where actor is in one room but scares through a wall into the room on the opposite side. And it also makes it so that you're not seeing the same actor three times in a row. Yeah. There might only be four people in there, but you're going to see a different person for every scare. Yeah, exactly. You're, you'll, you'll see the same person twice, but there's going to be a few things in between that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we've been really working on that in, in terms of layout, design. Yeah. Uh, home haunts are beds of innovation. No. Number five. Number five. Good PR. There we are go. good for communities. Yes. Um, Home haunts get a lot of good PR to the haunted house industry. Uh, we get... Uh, news articles and interviews about us more often than not. 
Yeah. And they're usually always positive. <clears throat> the few times that have been, you know, negative that I can think of that we've covered are, you know, the, uh, the neighbors complaining and getting things shut down. Yeah. But basically, um, I understand why some pro haunts think this is frustrating because that's attention away from their pro haunts. Uh, but that, don't look at it that way. Look at it as more eyes and more attention on the industry. I have always said your competition is not other haunted attractions. Your competition is that concert they could be going to. It's that fair or festival that's somewhere else they could be going to. It's anything else other than going to haunted attractions they'd be doing with their Friday or Saturday night. Yeah. That's your real competition. Haunted houses can and do and should collaborate and work together. There's a reason why... You know, car dealerships spring up on top of one another. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, they're competition for one another. You're only buying one car. But the biggest competition is being the area that you go to to buy a car. Yeah. And when you get 10 dealerships in one place, that becomes the area you go to. So that dealership way out in 10 buck two, no one goes to. There's only one dealership. Exactly. No, you go to where all the car dealers are, and you go and you look at what everything has to offer. Exactly. That way you can you can hit them up and see which one has the best deal for you. Exactly. Um, or the best experience. Yeah, exactly. So, basically, it's good PR. This is a rising tide lifts all boats moment. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that the PR that home haunts get, get people thinking about haunted attractions in a positive way. And that's going to translate to more tickets for all haunted houses. That easy. Number six, as Alice Cooper would say, mm -hmm. keeping Halloween alive, baby, 365. No. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, you know, basically, this is a hard truth company. A lot of the traditions that you, Crystal, and I, and a lot of people our age grew up with, are dying off. And I think they're dying off for, I mean, traditions change, traditions die off. I just wish they would die off for reasons that make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Rather and, than, and you're talking like trick or treating. Yeah, trick or treating. In neighborhoods. Especially, you know, by yourself. Yeah. And we're just walking around door to door, bucket in hand, trick or treating on your own. Um, that's not a thing that a lot of people do. It's being replaced with like trunk or treating. A lot of the Halloween activities have been replaced. And I'm not knocking trunk or treating. There are many places where it's the only practical alternative. And I'm not dissing trunk or treating. No. If it's what you have, it's the only option you have. It's the only option you have. I get that. But we old bastards grew up with a very different Halloween. And basically, I home haunts are one of the things really keeping the tradition of Halloween in residential areas alive. Mm -hmm. And we're an industry that's tethered to Halloween. Yeah, and if you, you know, go ahead. No, if Halloween Sorry. starts to wane, if Halloween starts to fade, and God help us, if Halloween starts getting gobbled up by the Christmas monster that already completely overran Thanksgiving. Oh, no, 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 no. See, Halloween is trying to gobble back. That's why you see the Christmas haunts. Yeah. We bite back, bitch. <laughs> We're like pineapple. Yes. We have the enzyme that eats you. Yes. Which is actually true. Mm -hmm. But not canned pineapple. It's got to be fresh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically, you know, we're trying to keep the Halloween traditions alive, the Halloween festivities alive. It's a tough time right now for it for a lot of reasons. But home haunts provide that, and that helps a haunted. That helps an industry that's pinned to Halloween. Yeah, that's my attitude. Mm -hmm. And number seven for we provide a very different experience than yeah. the pro haunts. You know, we're we're smaller, but we're still fun. We help families build traditions that involve Halloween yeah. and give fond memories about Halloween. Yeah. And so whenever you get yeah. older, you want to spend Halloween with your friends, you're too old to trick or treat, you go to re regular pro haunted houses. Yeah. You know? And that's a good point I hadn't even thought about. That could be like our eighth hidden reason is building the traditions for families. Because if you as a kid go to home haunts and you have fun at them, when you get to be a teenager, even a young adult, you're going to have all these fond memories of Halloween, and Halloween comes around, you're going to want to keep those memories going. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to go to a pro on, like you said. Exactly. So, yeah, that's it. We provide a very, but, yeah, we do provide a very different experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, basically, if you look at the time it takes, um, the niche that we fill, the type of scares you'll see, 
we're very different from any pro haunt. Yes, we like to talk about building to the standards of a pro haunt, but it's smaller. Right. And we do. But that doesn't mean the experience is the same. We can't copy the experience. We're too small. We would need to be about 10 times the size we are to even have a chance at copying it. Um, so, yeah. Basically, we provide a very, very different experience. Even though we describe ourselves as a bite-sized pro haunt and the way we build, that doesn't mean the experience to the visitor is the same. Right. And it's also not the same at home haunts in other areas. Yeah. Like, I've seen, you know, the there was TV series about home haunts mm -hmm. that was a contest or something. And it was, um, it was interesting to see what everybody did. A lot of... The ones that I've seen are also just really elaborate, impressive facades mm -hmm. for the house that you, you go up and trick or treat at. Um, there are different styles of walkthroughs. You can look on YouTube for plenty of examples yeah. um, of the different things. So whenever we talk about our haunt and we talk about building to pro standards, what we're talking about is we have real walls. We have panel-based construction. We have panel-based construction. We have, we utilize lighting and my art degree. Um, <laughs> to, hey, we got to get something out of that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, to to detail rooms out and, and make it look more set-like than you might see at a home haunt that's still on the Visqueen walls. Yeah, and, and that's always kind of fun when people come in and get to that first room and go, wait, I thought this was just a cheesy little home haunt. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, honey. <laughs> yeah. Bless your heart. <laughs> this is going to be fun for someone. Hopefully everyone, but at least someone's going to have fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. Yeah, we're going to have a great time. <laughs> so, yeah. But basically, we provide a different experience. Don't think of home haunts as competition. Don't think of home haunts as a lesser than to a pro haunt. Think of it as a different than. Yeah. I think that's just the kind of the message I'm trying to get with that seventh point. Mm -hmm. So if you are a pro haunter or connected with a pro haunt, what are some ways in which you can help home haunters? One thing is to be just be generally supportive. Yeah. I, and that's and visit the haunts if you can. I get it. Home haunts are open on your busiest nights. But maybe schedule a time after season to go swing by and see what they did. Yeah, they would absolutely For, go flip their gaga shit. if you you know, just said, hey, can we bring a couple of crew members by yeah. on a night right after you close or on the night before you open, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or the night after, you know. The, yeah, exactly. Basically, just come by and want to see what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would love that. <laughs> I say that, but then I remember how scared to shit we were when we saw the um, haunt, um, haunt con buses come down the road. Oh, I was excited. I was not scared. I was fucking scared, okay? No. I was terrified of those buses. But yeah. everyone was wonderful. Everyone was wonderful, by the way. It ended up being great, but man, when you see those land yachts around the corner. Yeah, I, I took off from work and then went back to work, and I walked in all smiles and, like, full of energy, and my boss was like, how can I get you to be like this all the time? It's like, let me go run my haunted house with a couple hundred visitors every couple of days. Yeah. That that would do it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize he said that. That's fucking rough. Yeah. <laughs> she, that, he basically told you to smile more. Yeah, she did. No, she did. I was yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. You were at, uh, it wasn't BC. Yeah, it was UHC. It was UHC at the time. Yeah. God. <sighs> It's even worse when another woman does it. Oh, God. But yeah, but that's one thing is just be supportive. I'm sure you're aware of who the major home haunters in your area are. Mm -hmm. Just try to be supportive and encourage them and go see what they're doing. Yep. Check it out. Uh, the second thing, and this is one I th I think would be a huge <gasps> asset to a lot of home haunts. Yes. Is, yeah, just is Take it away. <laughs> is to offer unwanted or unneeded props at a price to them. You know, just have a little local garage sale. This could even be done with the other haunts in the area where you swap props and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're already swapping props with other um, pro right. haunts, yeah. just invite the home haunters. Yeah, they're not going to be able to provide as much money or stuff. But if there's something that nobody wants, especially, I mean, yeah. we'll use it. I mean, okay. And, and like one of the issues is like, are we going to buy that $6,000 or whatever Vertigo Tunnel? 
No, no, no. no. That's way above our budget. Can't do that. Um, thank you for the offer, but no, besides, I don't really want a Vertigo Tunnel anyway. No. Um, but, but that animated torso prop that you have that doesn't fit in anywhere and maybe doesn't work quite right. Yeah. We could use that. Yeah. Or broken weapons, um, limbs that aren't up to your standard anymore. Masks that maybe yeah. have minor imperfections you're not using. Yeah. Just things that you were retiring yeah. and don't have a use for. Because Home haunters can use it. I get frustrated when I see pro haunts, either A, in the worst case scenarios, when they throw it out. Yeah. Oh, that makes me sick to my stomach. But it gets, but also offering it exclusively to other pro haunters. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of this stuff, just because it's gently used and sometimes not so gently used, yeah, I, it's not going to be much use to another pro attraction. But a home haunt, if given a reasonable price on it, can do it. And yeah, I mean, what is reasonable? I understand. But the point is, offer home haunters a path to purchase props and items that you aren't using anymore, that you've gotten your value out of. Mm -hmm. I, that would be a huge boon. Like basically, you know, in our budget, we try to spend less than a thousand dollars per year on the haunt itself. So when we bought the uh, new Bernie mask, that yeah. was half our budget gone. Yeah. Boom. Well, Five hundred dollars disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, it was a uh, year that we had already built been yeah, been, been built for three years. Yeah, and and that was okay because we didn't actually have any haunt expenses. Because like you said, that's the year we'd been built for three years, and we knew we didn't have to buy lumber. We knew we didn't have to buy right. anything else. We just had to basically clean up and open the doors. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, think but like that. You know, it would have been really cool to get a mask like that secondhand at probably about half price. Yeah, that would have been a huge boon for us, but. So, yeah, home, pro haunts, please do consider home haunters when you're retiring props um, and effects and things like that. I mean, yeah. Even simple stuff like fog machines, the yeah. higher-end fog machines, mm -hmm. can be a huge, huge boon. <clears throat> and the final one is cross-promotion. Uh, we have never been approached by a pro haunt. This isn't a knock. No. Go ahead. Go. Oh, wait, you're right. We have been. You're right. You're right. I was, I was about to stop you. <laughs> Because we have helped with last year, but... You were correct. So you can't say never. No, never, never, never. But it's rare. It is rare. But to, for pro haunts to collaborate in any way with home haunts for marketing, one thing I would love to do is to be able to offer like a coupon to the Mortuary or New Orleans Nightmare or something. Or decompose. Or decompose. Yeah, you come by our haunt... Um, you get a ticket or something, you get a little thing, yeah. and you take that to the other haunt, and boom, you know, you get $5 off your ticket, or you get, you know, half off your VIP upgrade, or whatever, right? Yeah. Just something to motivate you to get out there. That, And you might think, well, how does that help? Well, it, it gives people another reason to go attend home haunts. Yeah. It would almost certainly get more people to the home haunted attractions. But also, you can do it in the reverse. I think it would be cool, especially if you have a home ha a haunt that is in an area where home haunts are around nearby. Right. As people are leaving on your exit path, offer a map that tells people, hey, these, attract these home haunts are open tonight. Give some love to our neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, or um, there's a lot of neighborhoods that will also put out trick-or-treat maps mm -hmm. for the houses that have the best trick-or-treating. Yeah, share those. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to make a recommendation I'm going to immediately regret making because <laughs> everything else about this is horrible as fuck. But this is like the one positive use I found for next door. Yeah. It's exactly this. Yeah. Their trick-or-treat slash haunted house maps, area, neighborhood maps, are really good and actually very useful. It's, so I basically have the next door app on my iPhone for one month out of the year, and I just shut it off for the other eleven because the other eleven basically on next door is means how racist are my neighbors today? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> and how very? The answer is always very. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I hate the next door app, but that is the one positive use I have found for it right there. Yeah, and the and the reason that I mentioned that we haven't that we have helped a pro haun is we did take flyers yep. for two events at Decompose that were after season. Yeah. So we handed them out 
Um, we took some of them to a bar the night that we got them before we were open. And then we took some of them and just put them on the little donation box so that people could grab them as they left. Mm-hmm. So that they would know that there's a new haunted house yeah. in the area. Yeah, and, and basically, you know, that type of cross promotion can do wonders for everyone, I think. Yeah. Because we need that crossover. We need people going to more haunted attractions, regardless of size. Yeah. Well, I think that's everything. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, everyone, thank you very much for joining us for the past 50 minutes or so. Hope you, hope you learned something. Hope this was useful, entertaining, funny, and or sexy. I don't know. You can, <laughs> you can find... Don't look at me like that. That's not sexy. <laughs> You can find more Haunt Weekly at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, YouTube.com slash Haunt Weekly, and anywhere you get your podcast from, assuming Crystal doesn't murder me sometime in the next 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you all next week with episode 440, divisible by four. That means it's time to do the, the news. news. We will see you all then, and we actually have a lot of news. There's been a lot going on in Haunt Week, so we'll see you then. <laughs>